Hello, people. Hi, it's Shadi here, Shadi Pupuala. Hmm. Well, I'm just here to really speak to you about a little bit about myself and give you like a little snippet of what I am planning to do in the next few months, probably next year now. But anyway, I'm an author, I'm an actress, I'm a mother, I'm a wife, and soon to be, guess what? The next stage in life. <laughs> so that's just one of the exciting things in my life. As a matter of fact, I'm here to talk to you about starting late, such as what I did. As a young person, I've always wanted to be an actress. Okay, I love acting, I love performing, I love entertaining, I love making people laugh. Um, it gets me into trouble quite sometimes, but that's just the way it is, you know. <laughs> so I remember when I was young, I told my dad, I think about 10, and I told him that I wanted to be an actress. Eee, that was <laughs> that was the worst mistake that I could do, that I could have done at that time. And because my dad being an, an academic, my dad being a Nigerian, an African man, you do not tell. Yet when your younger child comes and says she wants to be an actress, it's like, are you ready to die? <laughs> are you okay? You know, just like a millennial will ask you. It's not like they're asking because they care. They're asking and they're saying like, is something wrong somewhere? It's like, are you okay? <laughs> so anyway, um, my dad looked at me and he said, if I dare, he didn't need to finish his sentence. I knew what he was talking about. I knew what he meant, but which meant I had to shelf it. So I shelved that. And then he sent me to the States. Ah, mistake number one. <laughs> I got to the States and I got into it. I managed to get a few things here and there, commercials. And then stuff happened. I got really naughty. And then I had to go back to Nigeria. And in going back to Nigeria, Ah, da, 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 da. So I had a family, I met a wonderful man, so I had a family, and uh, I just could not see myself, you know, going into it because I had two young children uh, at the time, and it was like I can't, I could not leave them because at that time in Nigeria, a lot of the acting, a lot of the productions always happened in the village. And there was just no way I could not envisage myself leaving those two young children, going to a village for about a month or so or more, you know, to shoot. So that was that. And then hubby said he wanted to come back here. So he came back here. And in coming back here, you know how it is here as in the UK, wherever you're watching from. Um, coming back here, it meant I had to really shelve. Even though while I was in Nigeria, I worked in the media. I had a TV show where I was uh, presenting uh, as a beautician, beauty expert, and, and makeup. And I also had a radio show uh, where, you know, it was a live show and we interacted throughout the night, you know, on different topics. It was great fun. But then again, he said he wanted to come here. So that was that. We shelved that and came here. It's a lot of shelving, huh? Mm -hmm. So anyway, we came here and um, I had to get a job, nine to five. And of course, I didn't know how to get into the media, didn't know how to get into acting, didn't know how to get into an industry or anything. So I didn't even bother because there was no time for that. You've got a family, you've got to go look for a job. So of course, I looked for a nine to five front of house reception, which is what I've been doing for quite a while now. And then the children grew up. <laughs> and as soon as they grew up, of course, by that time, during that time, I wasn't very happy. I was not happy at all. I couldn't even put my finger on it. So why I was so unhappy, you know, but it had a lot, a lot of it had to do with the fact that I just was not walking in my purpose. I was not walking in what was in me, whatever was in me, the creativity, the performing, the acting, the talking, the this, the that, you know, was not being was not being utilized and it was like to bother me it's, it's always it, it's like it became a cancer in me and um so went to my husband as they grew up I went to my husband my children grew up I went to my husband and I was like I flattened my eyelashes in the right place uh, I met him in the kitchen my husband is a foodie he loves food 
<laughs> so I met him in the kitchen. And I said, Hubby, I want to talk to you. And um, I want to go back into acting. And I need your support. And uh, he looks at me and he goes, what kind of support do you need? <laughs> yeah, that's how that's how he would that's how he would answer me. Oh, what kind, oh, what kind of support do you need? You know, so I said to him, I said, I'd like to go into temping, you know, so I can face my acting. I need to go back into acting. I'm not happy, I'm not this, I'm not that. And he said, mm, Okay. So of course I told my children, millennials, you know, millennials, you know. They were like, yeah, mom, that is so cool. Yeah, 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 that's great. They were wonderful. They were so happy. Like, And I said, you don't think it's too late for mom to do that? But at that time, I was in my mid-50s. You don't think it's too late, mom? They didn't ask, my, ask me that question. I asked them that. They don't think it's too late. And they were like, no, mom, no, no. Come do what you need to do. You need to, if that's what makes it. I told my mom, and that was that. I told my daughter in the States, she felt the same way. I like, Yes, you know, so uh, what, what did I have to do? I didn't know anything about the industry. So I looked it up, looked a bit of stuff up and I found out how to get into extra work. So I became an extra. I did that for what, two years or so. And uh, as in doing that, after a while, I, I was like, nah, I need to move up. I need to move up. And that happened from an extra work that I got. I had this film that I was in, don't know what happened to it. I remember in in that particular scene, uh, the director took a liking to how I performed and he gave me a few lines, don't know what happened to it. But at that point, that made me feel good because I had lines the attention was on me and I had lines. My work was being scrutinized, you know, and he, he would look and he would tell me to stop or do it this way and that way. The whole thing was just exciting for me. I loved it. I was like, you know what? Okay. I need to get serious here. So what did I do? I didn't have any material at the time. So I decided to shoot a film, a short film, mind you. I'm not a director, I'm not a producer. I don't know how to shoot films. I'm not a camera person. I don't even know how it works. But one thing I knew was I had a story. So I decided to tell that story of what happened to me. Um, that was quite traumatic. Um, I called the film Empty Deceit. It's on YouTube right there. So anyway, I got my daughter together and she got her friends. Uh, I put uh, an advert out. I got uh, an, another actress and she came on. And um, we shot the film and threw a synopsis. Imagine that. I didn't even have a script, but I had a message. And we shot it. And guess what? Only later on in maybe about a, a few years, maybe like two years or so, a year or two, I got an email from a film festival in California, in Hollywood, saying they love my film. They want to put me in the thing and nominate me. And I'm like, what? Are you okay? Like, really? Me? Like, what? I mean, I was shocked. I was shocked to my bones. To my bones that my first film, you know, is getting this kind of attention from out of the blue. Because all I did was I just uploaded it to um, YouTube. And if I needed to see an, uh, a casting agent or, uh, or an agent, I would say, this is what I've done, which is the whole reason why I did it, which is why I starred in it. I starred in it so I could get work, so I could show what I have done and what I can do. You know, because if you if you recall, I said I had I had no, no material, nothing. And extra work is no material. Don't really help you that much. But anyway, so I preserved and I moved on and I uh, did a showcase with a company in the States, went to the States, did a showcase, got a few, met a few agents there, signed up and things were still not really moving. And I had to find out why. I found out why. I implemented it. And boy, things just went zzz. I got headhunted. Agents wanted to speak to me. It got to the point where I was interviewing agents and deciding who it is I wanted to go with. You know, and a lot changed. A lot changed. 
And it's because I put in changes that were tangible. So I got off the shelf into the storefront. <laughs> and I've not looked back. Now, I'm in my 60s. I'm working. I'm getting calls for work. I'm with an agent who I can say is the bestest of the bestest. If there's no such word as bestest, I'm making it up today. Making it up today. It's, they're the bestest right there. I even got a commercial where I have to go shoot outside of the UK. So yes, it can be done. It can be done, but there's a way around it. You have to go through it through the right routes so you could be seen and be remembered. Remember, casting agents, the attention span is zoom, zoom, fast, it's like a blink. You know, they don't have time. However, there's a way to get their attention where you get at least a minute or two of their time. And if you could get that minute or two, you're a star, honey. And that's what you need to do. And that's what I did. So I'm going to be sharing that as time goes on and showing people, helping women over 50 who want to get back into industry, who want to go into the industry, but they feel shy, they feel Who's going to want to use me anyway? Oh, who's going to want to use me? Nah, honey, I'm a product. And until I'm six feet, I'm still going to be doing stuff. What I did was I positioned myself rightly. There is a way to position yourself. If you could do that, you will get it noticed. You will get calls and you will be listed or repped, as they say. <laughs> you'll be repped by the right agents. The right agents want to see you. They also need to make money and they need somebody as unique as you to represent. So stay tuned to my page. I will, I'm looking to, um, to roll this out in the next, probably next year now, because uh, there's just so much going on right now and I wouldn't be able to do it now but yes definitely looking forward to that so but if you have any questions and you want to talk about it like hey i can relate my dad didn't allow me i've always wanted to go into the media i've always wanted to go into acting i've always wanted to do this and that but we i was prevented from doing it but now on my own and i want to do it don't listen to the naysayers they're out there don't listen to the naysayers as a matter of fact Turn a deaf ear to them, but keep them somewhere because that time is coming where you're going to shine and they're going to be like, can I have a shade, please? Shadi's light is a bit bright for my eyes. <laughs> so ladies, be on the lookout. It's been nice talking to you. Once again, my name is Shadi Kubwala. <laughs>